Hello, I'm Kevin Zettel, a technical marketing engineer here at Infoblox, and today I'm here to talk to you about how you can use the Blocks One Cloud REST API. So first, let's do a quick overview on what we'll be covering. First, I'll walk you through some high-level slides on an overview for a REST API. Then after that, I'll show you an awesome, quick and easy way that you can set up your own environment to start testing our APIs today using Postman and Infoblox's Swagger documentation. Then finally, I'll demonstrate some examples of Blocks One Cloud REST API and how it can be used. So first, let's look at a high-level overview. Here, we have a couple of different REST API calls that we can make. The get call allows you to retrieve the source of the data from the platform and does not change the data itself. This way, you can read the data and see what's going on safely. The put and patch calls are used the same way in the platform. However, they are used in different calls and you will need to check the documentation on which one is available for the call you want to make. The put and patch calls are used to update and modify the data on the cloud platform. They do not completely add a new entry. Post is the Rust API call that allows you to add a new entry into the cloud platform. Finally, delete allows you to remove the data from the platform, allowing you to delete mistakes or delete information that is no longer needed or wanted. Now let's talk about some of the cloud platform's general REST API information. The API starts with a basic generic URL FQDN with HTTPS CSP.infoblox.com. Then, additionally on top of that, you'll need to add a subdirectory depending on the call you're trying to make. For Blocks 1 DDI, that is API DDI version 1. For Blocks 1 Threat Defense, that is API ATCFW version 1. And for Blocks 1 Cloud, that is API Anycast version 1. Now these may change in the future, or we may add additional subdirectories for more calls, so be sure to check the documentation when you start using Infoblox's REST API. For URL parameters, we currently have 20 different parameters to help configure the REST API call. This allows you to change the way that the request is set so that you can add, modify, or remove specific information. Now these URL parameters do not include the body parameters, which can be placed inside the body URL parameter. The Cloud Platform REST API calls may also have some required fields for each call and will be found on the documentation in the Requires section, as you can see below. Finally, API tokens are what you'll need to have access to the platform. This way you'll be able to create, read, update, and delete the information that you want. Now to find the token, you'll need to log in to the Cloud Portal, and under your profile, under User Preferences, you will actually be able to find the API key. Now, you simply need to copy it and you'll have it ready to be used once it's placed inside the REST API request. Now today, I'll be using Postman, which is an extremely popular API testing tool. However, there are others out there such as Insomnia, so if you're more comfortable with those, go ahead and feel free to use them. Additionally, I'll be using Infoblox's Swagger documentation for the REST API calls, and it can be used to auto-populate our Postman. Now let's see how to set up our environment. Here, I'm inside my Postman. However, I want to first take a look inside my Swagger documentation. Here, you'll see that we have the ability to see all our REST API calls with detailed information on each individual call that exists. Now you could manually, one at a time, add this information into your API test environment. However, there's an easier way with Postman. Here, at the top, we can save the URL, and then when we go to Postman, we can click the import and import by the URL. Then after a few seconds, we'll see that Postman will automatically add all the calls for us. Now another useful piece of Postman is the environments which we can save our variables on. You can see two of the environments right here. Now to add our environment, you simply need to click the gear icon and then add. Once you added a new environment, simply add the variables you want. In this case, to make our lives easier, I have a base URL and token that I've set up before importing the REST API calls from Swagger. These two variables are very important as it will allow us to start using the REST API quickly. Then, make sure to add the URL that you want to use that we talked about in the high-level overview slides on the base URL. Once you've added the base URL, you'll need to remove the variables from the collection by simply editing it. Now for the API token, you can manually enter in the authorization into each and every individual header as I'm doing here. However, this is cumbersome and annoying 
and most people don't want to have to do all of this manually. Luckily, there is an easier way. Remember, I just showed you that we also added the token to the environment variables. Well now, we can add that variable to every request made by editing the collection and adding a pre-request script. This one is very simple and nothing too complicated, as it simply adds a header to each call before it's made. In this case, the key will be authorization and the value will be the token that we added to the environments variables. And here, when we do a get request, we can see that the environment is working. Now let's see some REST API calls in action. Now here, I've already set up my Postman environment. And if you'd like to see how, make sure to go back and review the previous section. So let's start with named lists, as I believe it is more complicated REST API call that will allow us to see all the functionality. Now here, when I hit send, we get a lengthy return with lots of items. However, each item returns with an ID. This ID can be used to retrieve individual items rather than the whole list. Additionally, there's an option to filter based on the parameters. In this case, we can see that I'm filtering for all named lists that are a custom list type. However, we seem to have an issue as the return tells us that we have an unexpected token called custom list. This is strange as I do know custom list is a type that we can search on. Now let's look at the documentation to confirm something. Here, under name lists, under the get call, we can see that the type is present. And now I can see that the type required is a string. And this indeed is our issue. So when I go back and add the quotes under the custom list, we can see that the request returns as intended. Now, there was additional information in the documentation talking about supported operations. Here, we can see that we have equivalence operation, which is what we are using, and a non-equivalence operation. Additionally, it looks like other parameters have a regex and reverse regex operation. However, for type, only equivalence and non-equivalent are supported. So when we go back to test this out, we can see that everything that is not custom list type is returned. Now additionally, we have the ability to add new lists. Here we can see that when we imported the Swagger documentation to Postman, that Postman auto-populated our body field to fill out. Here, however, we can only use items or items described, and not both at the same time. So let's see them both in action. Here I'm adding items and not items described, and saving the ID as we'll be using it later. Then this time, I'm adding the named list with the items described. But it seems that we ran into another issue. Here, we can see that the output says we can't have duplicate names. In fact, this was not found in the documentation. However, we can see that the return gives us a detailed message on the issue, so even if the call fails, we can easily fix it. So for this call, I'll change the name to demo REST API list number two. And here we can see that the list was created for us with the items that are described. And here, I'm going to save the ID of the list so I can show you the list being deleted. When deleting items, you'll notice that instead of deleting the items one at a time through an ID on the URL parameters, Infoblox's cloud platform allows you to delete multiple items through the body of the delete request. This allows you to scale out your creation and deletion of items quickly. Then to prove that this item was deleted, we can try and retrieve the item when we do a get recall by the ID. And here, we can see that the item does not exist. However, the first name list that we created still exists within the environment. Now here, we're also able to modify the items inside the name list. Again, Postman automatically gives us the fields to fill out, but again, we can only use items or items described. Here, I'll add hello to the items in the list, and when I get the list, we can see that the new item hello was added. Now, I'll add items by items described. And here we can see that badsite4and5.com have been added. Now, we can also delete items in the list by adding the ID of the list we want to remove from. Then, in the body, 
choose which items we want to remove. Do note that we can remove items by items or items described, and they will both delete each other. So here, when I add bedsite4 and 5.com, they will be deleted despite the fact that they were described. And here we can see that bedsite4 and 5.com have been removed from the named list. Well, thank you for your time. I'll assume that this was useful. If you have any other questions or concerns, you can find me or any of our other experts at Infoblocks on the Infoblocks community website. Thank you for your time and have a great rest of your day.